Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Today I'm going to introduce uh, a new lockback uh, design that I just finished up. It is... I'm not sure if it's the best, but it is a, 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 a good design for a lockback from what I can see so far. Um, I carried, you know, like everybody, I've carried different pocket knives over the years. This one right here was one of my my first ones that I remember an awful lot of. It's a Gerber, um, can't, uh, it says Gerber 400. I can't remember the, the name of it anymore. But it is a, oh wait a minute, no, it'll be unfocused. It is a, a lightweight, linerless, bolsterless uh, lockback. It's a rear lock, um, has a pocket clip. You can tell that uh, that I used it quite a bit. I mean this blade was probably a half inch longer if not more than this when it was brand new. So I carried it for quite a while. Um, and while I liked the strength of the lock back, I didn't like the fact that it took two hands to open it. And it really took two hands to close it. I mean sure you could grab a hold of the blade and you know pop it out like that and as long as you know it was well oiled it would open up pretty good. And then when you went to close it, you know, you could either do this, but see right there, that puts a part of my body in the path of the blade. And I never really did care for that. Or, you know, you can turn it around and then kind of pinch the blade in between your pinky and your, the heel of your hand, and engage the lock with your thumb. You'll feel it kind of break over a little bit, and then get everything out of the way and close it up. But I never really liked that all that much. I think after this one I went to a, a Gerber Easy Out, which is uh, pretty much the same thing, only it's a mid-lock. Um, so instead of the lock being, it's probably easier to see on this one, instead of the lock being back here, um, the pivot for the lock bar was moved up and the notch would be right here. You know, you still get the strength of a lock back, but and I think uh, the Easy Out did have a, a hole in the blade for, you know, kind of like a thumb stud. So you could open it one-handed, but still you had to do that crazy, you know, hand acrobatics to be able to get the blade closed with one hand. And, you know, you get better at it if you carry a knife like that every day. I mean, you're practicing every single day, so you get better at it. But still, putting, I mean, I like to keep my knives fairly sharp. So, you know, putting a part of my body in the path of that blade closing just doesn't you know sit very well with me which is probably one of the reasons why I don't particularly like liner locks um, this one right here is a really nice one um, picked it up at a pawn shop a while god ten years ago it's a Microtech SOCOM and 154 CM I actually used this one as a bibs knife for a while um, but see then again you know putting my thumb in the path of that blade as it goes to close, you know, I just don't like that. Now the, the flippers, you know, you've got a guard that comes out here so that as you close it, that guard becomes your flipper. You know, those are a step in the right direction, I think. But anyway, so back to the lockbacks. So I was watching uh, Gene Osborne's, um, I think it's how to make, it's called Producing Lockback Folders with Gene Osborne. Um, if, if you get a chance to get that video and watch it, uh, excellent video. He's got some really pretty knives and some really nice designs in there. But one of them that he was showing was what he called the toggle lock. Um, I think that's what it was. Anyways, I saw that and instantly I thought, wait a minute. You're telling me that you can have a one-handed opening and a one-hand closing lock back? that I don't have to put a part of my body in the path of the blade. I can open it one hand and I can close it one hand and my body never gets in the path of that blade. Now the one that he was making, um, he calls them thumb bobs instead of thumb studs, but he had a single thumb bob, uh, a single one for the blade, you know it didn't go completely through the blade, and a single one for the toggle, it didn't go completely through. So I saw that and I thought, well, hey, if I was to make those, uh, you know, uh, straight through thumb studs, it would be one hand open, one hand closed, one hand open, 
one hand closed, either hand, with the strength of a lockback. So, of course, I had to do it. Now, on this one right here, I will, uh, yeah, I'll change the focus on this so you can get a close-up of it. You know, this new camera is really nice, but the whole manual focusing thing sometimes gets in the way. So this one right here was the, the prototype. I whipped this thing up just as fast as I could just to kind of see if it was going to work. I did put a, a pocket clip on it. And these thumb studs are way oversized for this, you know, this overall size of knife. Um, and it just so happened that I had uh, six of these that I was working, or I was going to go ahead and finish out. And I decided, you know what, we're going to, they were going to be traditional um, uh, rear locks instead of uh, the toggle lock. But as soon as I saw that, I needed something to practice on. So this whole batch kind of got sacrificed for that. Which is just as well because the nail nick here, um, I got a, uh, a real nice dovetail cutter to cut these nail nicks. And this was the first batch I did that with. And I went too deep on three of them because uh, I got cracks during the heat treat. So I've got to check that, um, that cutter out and see if there's a burr on there or and you know clean out uh, the ones that cracked and really take a hard look at them underneath the microscope and see what if I can see what was causing that but three of them came out okay this one was a prototype the other one is finished out I'll show it to you in a second and the third one I might finish it out too I don't know um, so anyway so you see the thumb stud here for the lock bar and one here for the opening so open it and then to close it, you lift up. So it's kind of like an axis lock, but axis locks, you know, you pull that thumb stud back. So this you just pull up. Other than that, it's, it's the same motion. You can open it fast. And you can still, um, you know, use two hands if you want to. I've got one of the ones that... Uh, that the blade cracked on right here I'll show it to you so you can see a little bit better how it works that looks pretty good okay so and this is the one of course that uh, as I was putting a base finish on it I don't know you might not be able to see it but there's a crack running right there that's identical to the nail neck and it starts oh I just saw part of it right there so it starts here and then travels all the way up but anyway so it does have these uh, these little bushings right here in the sides of the scales uh, they give you most of the strength of a bolster but uh, at you know a fifth of the weight so anyway, so this one doesn't have a thumb stud installed in the blade, but that hole would go right there. And then that's your thumb stud going through the... Ah, there we go. See how that thumb stud goes through the, the tab on the lock bar? And then other than that, it's just a straight up lock back. So when you go to, to close it, your thumb is lifting that tab up and then it'll close. Um, another nice thing about this is that on the prototype I didn't do that but on this one that I finished out now this one's already spoken for it was in order um, but a couple of things about the lockback that I really didn't like when I was carrying one one was the fact that I had to put a part of my body in the path of the blade to be able to close it. The second one, and this is common to pretty much all lockbacks and slip joints, unless you put a pin, if you put a pin right up in here uh, to stop the tang from going over, if you press down on that blade after it's closed, see that? Your edge contacts something whether it's the the underside of the lock bar the spring or the part that holds the spring you know so if you uh, um, 
if as you're closing it, you know, it closes too fast and there's not enough space in here, it'll actually strike that and dull part of your blade. Well, with this dual thumb stud design, what I did was, you're still kind of out of focus here, there. You see that? The edge of that thumb stud contacts the scales which means that you can't overclose this blade which means that you can't dull it up like that uh, I did put the dual or the reversible pocket clip um, so it's for a tip up carry uh, I know some guys like to carry tip up um, I think that would be extra holes in there uh, and I think that would be too much around where this toggle is but anyway so uh, like I said this one's got the bolsters got the um, uh, the stop or the thumb stud acts as a stop pin uh, and the toggle lock. So one hand open. Let me back yeah back out. So we've got one hand open, one hand closed on either hand, um, and you know there's no over rotation, so you don't dull your blade on the the, the inside of the lock back. Which that right there, oh, one last thing. Okay, so I have had um, lockbacks fail on me in pretty hard use um, that didn't have to do with shock. You know, a lot of times, you know, people do tests where they smack the back of the blade like that. And, um, you know, in some instances, especially if you've got pocket lint and dirt and uh, grit and everything in there, you know, that can kind of cause it to fail. But... Um, I'm talking about holding the knife in my hand, using it, and then uh, I've had parts of my hand contact that lock bar and had it, you know, want to go closed on me. This design right here prevents that. Well, I, I, at least I think it will. I mean, I haven't used this but maybe a couple of weeks now. But the harder you grip that, the harder you're pushing the lock tab into the lock notch. You know, I mean, I guess if you were to to go like this maybe, you know, you might um, might do that or might want to be pushing the lock notch out. But generally speaking, if you're holding like this, you're going to be doing a pulling cut. So anyhow, so I think um, I'm going to keep carrying this one right here. Like I said, it's a prototype. I'll beat it up and you know eventually it'll go into a cardboard box somewhere or other and then these two right here that had the uh, um, the cracks in the blades you know those cracks were up here around where the the nail neck is so I've still got plenty of blade black back here to grab a hold of so I think I'll probably um, clamp them up in a vise and uh, do some destructive testing. Of course, I'll finish them out, um, you know, real roughly, get them peened together and everything, and then just kind of see what it'll take as far as, you know, lock strength, uh, lateral strength. Um, I think the blade will fail way longer, way before the pins will and the handle, but um, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so um, that's just a, and, you know, I have never seen one of these. I mean, I've been posting up a couple of pictures of the build process on Instagram and, and Facebook, and some of the guys have said, oh yeah, hey, I had a knife that worked just like that. You know, I have never seen a toggle lock like this in person. The first one that I saw in my hand was this one right here that I made. Um, and the first one that I recall even seeing on video or the internet or anything is that one in Gene Osborne's uh, Producing Lockback Folders video. Um, it's a heck of a design, I guess, uh, I guess I'll keep playing with it and, and start, uh, taking orders for them and start selling them and so far I'm not seeing where any kind of problems would come from them. Just see just good things. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.